Hi everyone, my name is Briley Lewis and I'm an astronomer. So right now I'm working on my doctorate in astrophysics here at UCLA. So when I was in middle school, I started competing in Science Olympiad here in Southern California. Our Division B team was brand new and I thought space science sounded really cool. So my main event was solar system. I kept going at Canyon High School in Anaheim Hills, um, where I again competed in astronomy in Division C for all four years of high school. Um, and although I did a bunch of other events too, um, some of which there's pictures of here, like chem lab, mousetrap vehicle, experimental design, just to name a couple, astronomy was always my favorite. And now my job is to do astronomy. So as a grad student, I both teach classes to undergrads here at UCLA and do my own scientific research. So my research is about planets, how we find planets around other stars, also known as exoplanets, how we make our telescopes better so we can find more exoplanets, um, what those exoplanets are like, and how planets are formed. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we take pictures of exoplanets and how what I learned in Science Olympiad helped me get here. So I showed this image on the first slide too. And it's actually a real picture of exoplanets around a star called HR 8799 that's just a little bit over 100 light years away from us. So these four exoplanets are all bigger than Jupiter and double the distances of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune respectively. So this is kind of like a scaled up outer solar system we've got here. The thing is, taking a picture of an exoplanet like that is really hard. It's like taking a picture of a firefly that's buzzing around the bright lights of Las Vegas from all the way here in Los Angeles. So that's pretty far away, that's really hard. And so there are three main steps to how we collect these images and figure out what kind of planets are out there, like the ones that I just showed. So the three main steps are first, we have to build really good technology and telescopes. Second, we need to know what to do with that data. We have to process it in ways that make it so that we can do science with it. And then we actually investigate and interpret the um, data itself to understand what's going on in the data. So all of these are actually skills that you're already learning in Science Olympiad. So let's go into more detail on each of these. So step one, building the telescopes and instruments and the detectors, so the cameras that actually allow us to take such cool images. So astronomers need really large telescopes to see fainter objects in the sky like planets. Um, and so most of those are already built. So the one I have on screen here is the Palomar Observatory in San Diego that you can actually go visit. Um, but we also need better cameras and other optics to help us record the light from those planets. So this is all engineering keeping in mind what you need to get the astronomy science stuff done you want. And this is exactly the kind of stuff that you practice in Science Olympiad building events. So these are photos of some of my teammates um, from when I was in high school and from our time building things together and competing. So building is great practice for this kind of building as well. For actually imaging the exoplanets, we have two main challenges that we need to work on with our engineering skills. One is getting the crispest, clearest image that you can. And we do this with a technology called adaptive optics that pretty much corrects for all of the blurring that happens from Earth's atmosphere. The second thing is we block out the light from that big bright star, or in our firefly analogy, this was the bright lights of Las Vegas. Um, so we block this out with a dot known as a coronagraph. And so after you've done all this, you actually have data from your telescope, and then you need to process it. So data processing really just means we're getting rid of the noisy bits to help make the signal, the thing we're interested in, show up more clearly. So this is all computer science. Astronomers spend a good bit of their time working on writing computer code, like this that I wrote in Python for a project of mine. And astronomers actually use DS9 too. I didn't totally understand this when I was doing Science Olympiad Astronomy, um, but it's actually a really helpful tool to be able to look at images and play around with them. So it's really useful that you learn this at Science Olympiad Astronomy. 
And for exoplanet imaging, data processing is particularly important. Without it, the faint things that we're interested in would get totally lost in that noise. So this is an example of data processing before and after. Before, you just see this big blur. And then after data processing, once you get rid of all that noise, you see this really clear ring, which is actually dust that's working on forming planets. And so lastly, once you have your beautiful processed data, you really want to understand what's going on in it. You want to know what that data is showing you. And this is where all that astronomy studying really comes in handy. So there are fundamental concepts that we use all the time in astronomy that I first learned in Science Olympiad. Like one of them is Kepler's laws for how to figure out orbits of things. Another is facts about planets and their geology and what's going on on their surfaces. A really key thing is the spectrum of light and what different wavelengths are used for. And then the different types of stars is another thing that comes up all the time in astronomy. So all these different concepts come together to help us figure out cool things about the universe like the distances and sizes of planets in that picture of HR 8799 I showed you. And so all this is to say that you are already learning the skills that professional scientists, that is people who do this kind of work as their jobs, use every day. Um, so the things that I learned in Science Olympiad have been really helpful in this job. And if you want to keep learning about exoplanets, I totally suggest you do since there's tons of cool stuff going on. A great place to start is NASA's exoplanets website. They even have a counter that updates regularly for how many planets we found, and that number is going up every day. You can also learn about with NASA the James Webb Space Telescope, which recently launched in December and is going to take its first images for science in the summer, and it's going to do a bunch of cool stuff for exoplanets. Another way that I also really loved learning about astronomy when I was doing Science Olympiad was reading a good book, textbooks included. So these are a few of my favorites, uh, both older from when I was in high school and newer from uh, the last few years, like Emily Levesque, The Last Stargazers. I think reading a good book is always a, a great way to learn about science. And last but not least, if you want to get more into science, a really fun way to do so is to get creative with it. I love making art and writing about science, and I find it's a really fun way to not only help myself learn more, but also to teach other people cool things. So remember, you are already a scientist, you are already learning all these skills, and you have this cool knowledge to share. So why not make things with it? And maybe someday you'll get paid for it too, like I am now, which is one of the coolest things I can say is that astronomy is my job now and I get to do it every day. So thanks y'all for listening and good luck in your competitions and have lots of fun.